like universities, uh, governments have been some of the earliest adopters of Second Life in virtual worlds. And I don't think we're entirely sure why that is other than bureaucracies that allow one individual to try something different is sort of the, the, the killer dynamic for Second Life because the one person goes and does something really cool and then by the time they're discovered, what they're doing is too big to stop. And um, you know, we've talked to other uh, folks who also work on virtual worlds and one of the questions comes up, well, how do you get it to run inside corporations because don't their firewalls block you? And it's like, well, yeah, but if you first co-op all of the IT people, um, then the firewalls are open to Second Life and everything works great. So, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, a friend of mine who uh, worked for, or works for USC at Annenberg was doing a Second Life talk with some U.S. Um, council generals, I don't remember which embassy it was, and he decided that to go to the meeting he should really dress up his avatar. So he bought really formal clothes and went, because he's, he's meeting people who are diplomats, right? Who could be more serious than that? And of course, the diplomats showed up with like wings and guns and all this stuff, and they're like, this is great, you know? And so, and IBM actually just came out with uh, guidelines for meetings in Second Life, sort of like their, their blogging guidelines. So. I, I, I think uh, it's kind of cool that they did that. I mean, you know, it's a, a different question about exactly how well that will be received. But so I don't think we know. I think that there's a lot of sort of cultural impedance mismatches when you deal with governments. But then again, um, we've seen um, uh, the Swedish embassy come into Second Life. We've seen some other relatively high-ranking foreign governments very quick. The um, Singapore has been very much on top of how can virtual worlds help us because they only have 700 square kilometers in the real world so I think that they're probably more open than to most to experimenting online and virtually so um, what I would say is much like looking back at other early online groups like say the well which was an, a very early online community in text you do end up getting this sort of cultural leakage where things that happen in the virtual space end up inspiring or, or causing stuff to happen in the real world. And it's probably easier in Second Life because a lot of what you can do in Second Life ends up being possible in the real world as well.